So all you would need to do is go to vieisme.com, v is me.com, and that's where you will find everything about Memoirs of Forgotten Child and also what I've been up to. I do daily vlogs, so it would be in the blog section. I also do YouTube videos, so it would be in the YouTube videos. And for the book, you can either go to the book, which details what's inside the book and the reason of it coming into existence. And if you already know all that because you watched all my YouTube videos, then you go to the store tab. And at the store tab is the back cover and the front cover together. And you just click. The miniature version of the book and then you would get to the book page and then you would get to the cart and all you gotta do is click add cart and proceed from there so this video is going to be the reasons why people don't talk about child molestation and I'm and I, and I will be speaking from a survivor standpoint because it'd be easier for most people to assume but from my experience and from other people's experiences, these are the reasons why people don't want to talk about such a taboo like child molestation. I get it. It's not a cool topic. It's not a topic that makes you laugh. It's not something that you can gossip about. It's not something that's instant gratification. But because the numbers are so high, especially in the Black community, it needs to be talked about. So I'm going to talk about it in this video. So on my Facebook, I made a post like, molestation will be the death of the black community and I continued speaking on why I felt that way. I'll add that Facebook post in this video so you guys can read it. But essentially the Facebook post was saying that we prey on our youth. We don't give our youth a chance to grow and to feel a sense of community, to set, feel a sense of independence, love, appreciation, confidence, self-assurance, self-confidence, because we have people who pray within the community. And I want to even go into more detail in this video about why I even made that Facebook post and why I felt like it's relevant to this topic and just relevant in general. In the Black community, we pray on our young, like, certain animals prey on their young. There's certain rodents who actually prey on their young, they eat their young. And I feel like in a black community, it's the same thing. When it comes to molestation, when you molest a child, you take away their innocence, you take away their self-assurance, their self-confidence, their love, their trust, their footing within the community. You take away all their hopes and desires. You force them into a situation that they were not prepared for. They were not prepared to know about sex. They were not prepared to be touched. And because a person, an adult, someone that they trusted, someone that they thought cared for them, violated in them in that manner, they could no longer go back to pre-molestation. Once you have been violated, that leaves a fracture in your mental, in your emotional and psychological that you can never go back. You can't be essentially heal from molestation and says that it never happened you can only go forward and you can never go back to a point where you never knew what it was like and that's harmful one reason why child molestation isn't really talked about is because it's not common and what i mean by it's not common i mean that it's not a common conversation it's not uncommon like the numbers are two percent of children who get molested that's not even a realm when it comes to black girls over 50% by the age of 18 will face some type of sexual violation, whether it's harassment, whether it's molestation, whether it's rape, but something sexual is going to be pushed on them before the age of 18. So it's not a small number. That's why many men have actually came out and said, you know, I've dated so many women who have been molested. I've dated so many women who have been raped, who have sexual um, histories of being violated or taken advantage of. And that is a true statement. And for me, as a grown adult, I have countless stories of girls and young women and women that I have met who 
all share the same story, whether it was molestation, whether it was rape, it was some type of violation that they had to process and go through and they had to keep a secret because it wasn't talked about. They couldn't go to their mother. They couldn't go to their father. If the father was in a household, they couldn't go to their cousin because it could have been the cousin who was molesting. They couldn't go to the auntie or the coach or to anybody because they didn't feel safe and they didn't want to be the cause of ripping the family or ripping the relationship apart. They didn't want to be the person who now is a victim, but now could be blamed for why so-and-so and the family doesn't get along together, why so-and-so is ousted out the family, or it could have just turned into you're lying. And I find that with a lot of victims, they do get the you're lying accusation as if children wake up one morning and come up with elaborate stories of sex they're inexperienced to sex, but for some reason, they just woke up in the morning and said, hmm, I just want to start a lie about sex and be so detailed about it. It's like a lot of people, not just in the black community, but a lot of people would rather believe their child is lying about such a serious topic than actually investigate. And I, it's not even because they think the child is lying. They rather live in the false reality that this didn't happen. So if they have to shun their child to turn away from the truth, they rather live a lie than, than actually live the truth and confront the person. In a lot of families that I do know where molestation has happened, there may be one victim that actually speaks about it, but there are multiple victims in the family. I have known families where cousins ran through and ravaged the family, where I know one person who came to me and said this happened in their family, but later on, they find out that their second, their third, their cousin's cousins were molested too by this person. And it seems to be, like I said, a lot of families tend to think that it's a family situation. The family will deal with it. And I would be okay with it if the family actually did deal with it. And most families dealing with it, man, don't talk about it. You know, we, we are aware of it, but we're going to separate you two. Um, so-and-so said they're sorry. Let's just move on. And that's not dealing with it. That's actually sweeping it under the rug. To be victimized and then say, okay, your opinions, your emotions, your voice doesn't matter because we rather live a lie or we rather not confront the situation and actually confront the situation is harmful. And a lot of families think that's the best way to go about it because they don't want to involve the police. They don't want to involve outsiders. And that says a lot to the victim that you rather choose the perpetrator. You rather choose the person who is preying on the children than the actual children. And that leaves another scar where it's like, man, not only have I been victimized, but now I'm told, being told to shut up and keep it to myself. So you're being victimized twice. And a lot of families, especially in the black community, they don't want to talk about that. They don't want to open up to that. They want to sweep it under the rug. But this is not something like I fell off my bank and I got a scar. Is, is not the equivalent. That totally shapes a person's life where a lot of people can't even have successful relationships. A lot of people cannot identify safe touch. A lot of people rather just not be touched. A lot of people can't even enter intimate relationships, can't even have sex because they have been scarred from an experience that happened so many years ago. So it's not something so trivial and something that you can just throw away into the side and act like it doesn't matter because it does. And I also notice in certain families, there are certain code words like, oh, don't leave the children with Uncle Bobby. You know, don't don't leave the kids with Aunt Lucy. You know how he is. You know, don't, don't leave them with Cousin Mark. And to children who don't really know what's going on in the family dynamics, they're just like, I don't get it. Like, they're family. Why, why can't we be with um, cousin Mark. Cousin Mark is cool. He he's nice. You know he shares. He he's older. And what everybody in, who's older in the family understand is Uncle Mark or cousin Mark molests, and we don't want the children to be molested. We're not going to do anything to Uncle Mark or uh, cousin Mark. We won't separate cousin Mark. We won't punish cousin Mark. We won't call the authorities on cousin Mark. We'll, we'll make sure it's to be a referee between cousin Mark and the children. What you don't understand is if a person wants to molest, they will find a way to molest. Whether it's underneath your household, whether it's two minutes at the store, whether it's in the school bathroom, if they want to do it, they will find a way to do it. And to think that you could separate them and that's enough as if it's two children fighting over a cookie is absurd. It's diminishing what the situation is and it's absurd.
And not to add on, you can't be everywhere at the same time. You can't always be there. So you're really putting the false idea that I could be everywhere at once, be everywhere at the same time on some omnipresence thing. And it doesn't work like that. I also know in certain families, circle of silence, which also goes back to, you know, families not speaking up, families not addressing the issues. And a circle of silence is basically everybody knows this person's a molester. Everybody knows this person's rapes. Everybody knows that this person preys on children. However, we won't do anything about it. We won't speak about it. We won't press charges. We, even if it's not calling up the authorities, but we as a family will address this issue and we will definitely do some type of punishment. We will definitely let this person know that this behavior will not be tolerated in the family. Nothing is being done. I notice with a lot of victims, which keeps them in victim mode and which keeps them in having horrible relationships, not only with the family, but outside and in having other relationships outside the family. And they're not healthy is because they've never dealt with it. Their family has never dealt with it. And that harms the person even more because that's letting the person know that their opinion doesn't matter. Their safety doesn't matter. Their position in the family doesn't matter. That you will
first victims don't want to be blamed. They don't want to be the cause of having the family rift or having the family friend rift or having the pastor rift or having the coach rift. They don't want to be the person who gets blamed. So they don't come out and speak up. And you're a child. How do you even process that? You don't have the tools to process speaking about rape, speaking about your feelings. You don't have the tools. You don't have the words. You don't have the maturity to even say something like that. Whether the person threatens your life, if you do tell or you don't tell, you feel shameful because Sex is not an act a child wants to participate. No child says, hmm, for some reason, I just feel like I want my genitals to be touched by an adult. That doesn't happen. There's there's a secrecy in being a child. There's an innocence. There's just a naivety of being a child. And that's what children do. They're not supposed to know these things. And when they are taken out of that realm of being a child and being innocent and being pure and being corrupted by some sick person, that child can no longer revert back to being a child who is innocent, who is pure. It's like when you once you know something, you can't unknow it. And you can't go to your parents to speak these things. I mean, you don't know how to speak to your parents about these things because I often found that parents do say things like, you know, don't let so-and-so touch you. You know, make sure that you dress a certain way. Make sure you act a certain way. Make sure you do X, Y, and Z. And the child will do what the parents ask them to do. The child will obey their parents' rules. But that doesn't stop a person from molesting. So obviously that's not working. Obviously telling your child, you know, don't wear too low cut and don't be too inviting and don't run up to strangers. That's not enough for a person to not molest. So obviously the conversation needs to shift from, oh, don't do this and don't do that. It needs to shift to what do you do if you find yourself in that situation? What do you do when a molester does molest? And it's not some weird, sick weirdo in the park in a trench coat watching kids slide down a slide looking inconspicuous. It's the coach. It's the pastor. It's the auntie. It's the nephew. It's the cousin. It's the father. It's the mother. It's the family. It's someone in the family or multiple people in the family. It's the family friend. It's the in-laws. What do you do? Because it seems to be the stereotype is some weirdo, some sick weirdo in the park. And it's not. Most victims know their perpetrator. Most victims know their predator. So the conversation needs to shift from, oh, this weirdo that you don't know to this weirdo who is masking him or herself within the family, within the circle within the friendship. And it's hard because it's easier to believe that it's some outsider who has no connection to you and you didn't know and they violated your child and you had no idea. But that's not the narrative. The narrative does not match up to reality. That's not real. The truth of the matter is you most likely do know who it is. I'm not saying that parents know the molester and they allow the, the molester to molest. What I am saying is that you know this person. You've seen this person. You've con conversed with this person. You've allowed this person to your circle. You had brunch with this person. And that's what makes this insidious of it all is that it's not some weirdo. It's, it's not some outsider. It's someone that you know. I think the reason why people keep on pushing on that narrative is because it's easy to digest. It makes you feel less guilty. It makes you feel less violated when you can say that it's somebody that you didn't know. Because if it is someone that you do know, it makes you want to reevaluate your approach to letting people inside your house, letting people near your kids. It makes you think that, man, I should have evaluated them more. I didn't see the signs. I was too quick to let this person in. I didn't know this person's backstory. And I think that's why people keep on that narrative. And it's like, you have to evaluate who you bring around your children, obviously. But that doesn't necessarily mean that the person doesn't live a double life. It doesn't mean that this person isn't wearing a mask. But what you need to do is protect your children the best that you can. That's what you can do. And you should never put anybody above doing such devious acts. A lot of people be like, oh, not the pastor, not the priest. And we all know about the Catholic priests, especially here in Massachusetts. It was a big scandal. And in certain places, it's still going on that these Catholic priests are praying on boys. We have recently the story of African Bambada praying on boys in the 80s. So this mentality of, 
oh, this person has some status and this person does this work and this person has this title that they would never, you should never put anybody above anything because people are capable of doing any act. And that's what makes it harmful and hurtful to begin with because it's not some person that you don't know. It's someone that you do know and you have given them that trust. You have given them that safety. You have given them that past and they have violated it. So don't ever put anybody above doing anything. People are people. People can make mistakes and people can be monsters. You just don't know. And the other reason why children don't speak about it is because early we teach children that if anybody's going to love you, it's going to be your family. If anybody's going to protect you, it's going to be your family. If anybody's going to do you right, it's going to be your family. And to be molested or taken advantage of by your family it's a contradiction to the belief system that you were installed in. You were installed with your family would never do you wrong. Your family would never purposely put you in harm's way. And now you're, you have been molested or someone has attempted to molest you. So it's a conflict of ideologies and the child is battling it because you may still deeply love Uncle Jimmy. But Uncle Jimmy violated you. So how do you approach Uncle Jimmy? Do you act like nothing's happened? Do you confront Uncle Jimmy? Do you tell Uncle Jimmy's sister, which is your mother, and they have a close relationship? Do you want to be the person that rips that apart? It's a whole lot of dimensions and factions and thoughts and processes and emotions and so much that goes into, should I tell? And that's why a lot of victims don't say anything until they become an adult because now they can process better. They can speak. They have a voice. They have confidence. They're no longer that scared child. And it really does irk me when people are like, oh, it happened so many years ago. Why didn't you say it then? It's not a conversation that we have with children. We will talk about stranger danger more than we will talk about stranger danger of molesting in your family. We will talk about stop, drop, and roll before we will talk about what do you do when someone molests your child. We do these things in society that protects our children from outsiders, but we never talk about protecting our children from the inside. So how does a child even have the ability to process and to speak their mind? Of course, we tell our children, like I said, you know, if someone touches you, tell me, but you don't have the tools and you don't have the list that goes, okay, if you've been molested, X, Y, and Z is what you do. You never really prepare your children for it like you do stop, drop, and roll. And I'm not saying you have to prepare your children to be molested because who wants to think that, yes, indefinite, your child will be molested. However, you have to put that out there and you do have to have those conversations because it's a real scenario and it happens pretty often. And lastly, the reason why people don't talk about molestation is because not too many people care. And I find this to be sad, but a harsh reality because a lot of people don't care because it doesn't fit into their um, happy, happy, joy, joy reality. It doesn't fit into the reality of things. Like I said, the statistics in the black community is very high for molestation. But if you went to any black family, they would act like that doesn't happen. But if you get deeper into the family, you will find out that it does happen. You may not know about it, but it does happen. It's just not spoken about. We pass it on to Jesus. We pass it on to Allah. We pass it on to, you no know, grandmama will handle it. Or, you know, we, we just pray on it. But you don't actually handle the situation within and it continues to breed and it continues to victimize more victims, more potential victims and the crazy thing about it is, in certain families, I find out it's intergenerational. That's the crazy thing about it. I will find out that mom has been molested, grandmama has been molested, cousin's been molested, sister's been molested. It's not just a person. It, it's not even just, oh, me and my cousins. It's damn near everybody. Damn near everybody. And, and, and I don't understand why it's not being spoken about because it's getting to a point where it's going to be like a quinceanera. If you're in a uh, Hispanic uh, background, you know, quinceanera, when a girl turns 15, that's like her right to a passage into womanhood. And I use it as an example because it seems like in the black community, it seems like molestation is that quinceanera where you will most likely than not experience being molested. You will most likely than not experience some type of sexual violation. And the fucked up part about it is that no one's going to care enough to change 
that and was going to do enough to stop the molester and to actually heal you and to actually make you feel like you are valid and make you feel that what has happened to you wasn't your fault. Most people will look at you like you either wanted it or you should have just kept your mouth shut or will just pray about it. You will be looked at crazy or you will feel like your opinions and your emotions and you being victimized doesn't matter. And like I said, like molestation is not an easy conversation to talk about. It's not. But just because something's uncomfortable it's not doesn't mean that you don't do it. I mean, we have had tests that were uncomfortable. We still had to do it. We have gotten shots. A lot of us, when we were children, we got shots. We didn't like being stuck, but we still had to do it. Just because something is uncomfortable doesn't mean that you don't do it or you don't confront it. And it seems like when it comes to the topic of molestation, because it's uncomfortable for many people, if not all people, we don't talk about it as if if we don't talk about it, it doesn't exist. That's That's not it. That's never it. That's like having stage four cancer and being like, well, because I can still get out of bed, it's not that bad. When really you are at the dying stages. And that's the reason why I even created this channel on YouTube for people who have been molested or people who know someone's been molested. That this is the safe place where we can converse about this. This is a safe place where you can get resources. This is a safe place where you can unburden yourself to not feel like you're being judged, to not feel like you're cursed or you're dirty or, or you should feel guilty or you should feel shameful or you should feel like you've been abused you're unwanted I want you to feel like this is your safe haven if you can't talk to anybody about this if you can't feel any type of validation or any type of safety it's like this is the space to do it so I felt like I could talk about hair. I could talk about the black experiences, which I do on my other channel. I could talk about anything. But what really is important to me is healing from sexual trauma. I wrote a book, Memoirs of Forgotten Child, about this, about healing from trauma, sexual trauma. And I wanted to have like a semi face to face conversation with anybody viewing this video because if no one's going to talk about it, I'll talk about it. And like I said, I really, really want to find a way to do like, I don't know, a five step or six step, something short, but something that can be memorized by a young child of what do you do when you are in a situation where someone's trying to molest you? Because we do have self-defense classes. We do have, like I said, stop, drop, and roll. We do have stranger danger, but no one has ever came up with a concept of what do you do if an adult or someone who's older than you is trying to molest you? Because we have instincts. We have the flight, fright, or fight. Those are the instincts that we have. And most people freeze. Most people don't know what to do when that happens. So I want to come up with some type of three or to five steps of what do you do when someone is trying to molest you. So it comes to you instantly, like drop, drop, and roll. When it is something like stranger danger, that it is part of the curriculum when a child is a young child, so they understand, so they know they know how to approach a situation. Even if, of course, the child doesn't go into it saying, hmm, I want to be molested. But if they are confronted with such a situation, they know how to handle it where they don't freeze up. Because it's a natural reaction to freeze up when you're a child, especially when someone has authority over you, someone is older than you. But we need to rewrite the rules. We need to change the narrative because doing certain things like talking a certain way, behaving a certain way, dressing a certain way is not keeping our children from being molested. And I do think it's wrong for us to be like, you, you need to do things so you don't get molested. But the molester, um, there's no protocol for that. If it happens, oh my God, we're devastated, but we're not devastated enough so we can punish and banish this person from the family just enough that we feel like it's a wrong thing that they did. We put more blame on the victim than we actually do on the molester. I know some people might be like, man, V, you're kind of extreme with this. Like, is it really that serious? And yes, it is that serious because if we will project our gems and our jewels and we put them in jewelry box, we'll make sure that they don't collect dust and we'll make sure that, you know, water doesn't get into them. And these are things then why don't we do it for our precious children? These are the futures. These are the people who are going to direct and take leadership of tomorrow, but we don't protect them. We don't find them as precious as diamonds and pearls. That doesn't make sense. So if we can protect objects 
then why don't we protect our children and make sure that they're valued and that they are protected and they matter by making sure that molesters don't molest them. And if they are molested, we make them feel safe enough where they can come out and speak their truth and know that we will love them, we will heal them, we won't judge them, but we will also punish the person who does molest. Yes, it is that serious. And no, it's not an extreme because if we can protect our Jews, then we need to be able to protect our children. So that is my video. I know it's a little lengthy, but I felt like I needed to speak about this because like I said in my Facebook post a couple of weeks ago, well, a couple of days ago, I was talking about, I know a lot of girls who've been molested, but now I'm starting to see a lot of boys also have been molested because the thought was, okay, girls get molested often and, you know, they're girls and whatever their belief was. But now I'm starting to see boys and young men and older men are talking about their experiences of being forced into uh, sexual situations whether it is a male sexually abusing another male or an older woman which I'm starting to find out too that older women are molesting young boys we've always heard of older men doing it but we've never heard older women doing it and that's a topic that's totally taboo because when we think of rapists, when we think of molesters, we think of males, but we do not think of women and women do molest and women do rape. So with that being said, I hope this video helps you. If you have been molested, I want you to free your mind, speak your, your truth. And if you do need any type of encouragement, I advise you to Join my Facebook page, self published author V. Cine, and you'll find resources on you know how to speak your truth and other articles and a community that people who can speak their mind and feel free to not be judged. Um, also, you can follow my IG, and all that information is at the end of the video and in the description box. My IG, where I post limited snippets from my book memoirs of forgotten child so you can get a feel for what for what i write about and also you can subscribe to this channel and you can find weekly videos on this topic about molestation and rape and hopefully helps you who have been a victim and if you haven't been a victim but you want the information i hope it still helps you and if you do know somebody could help please pass this video on to them comment rate subscribe and share tell me what you think of this video did i miss anything do you have any experiences of speaking to someone who was molested or have you been molested and what are your trials and tribulations? Did I cover everything correctly? Did I miss anything? And if I did miss anything, feel free to add it on below. And as always, be blessed and I am out.